Hi, my name is Dershan Doshi. Uh, I'm an interventional cardiologist at the Massachusetts General Hospital and on the faculty of Harvard Medical School, where I direct the complex coronary program. So I've used C2 Plus. Uh, we're part of the limited market release. Uh, can't wait for it to come out for everybody. But as part of the limited market release, uh, we've done a handful of cases and uh, it's been fantastic. There are a couple of advantages of the C2 Plus from the original C2 catheter, mainly that you have 40 more pulses. And those 40 pulses are fantastic because it allows you to treat longer lesion lengths, uh, much more diffuse calcific disease. And on top of that, you can treat nodular calcification, which we know has some of the worst outcomes in all of the calcium subtypes. We know that uh, with nodular calcium, you have to use more pulses to try to get the effect that you do with non-nodular calcium. Um, fortunately, we know from the work that Ziad Ali and his colleagues have done that if you use IVL, that you can get stent expansion that is comparable for nodular calcium as it is for non-nodular calcium. And so for C2+, Plus, uh, the fact that you have 40 more pulses, you can use those pulses to really focus in on the nodular calcium, which we know is some of the most difficult types of uh, calcium to treat. We know that th the most common subtype of calcium is actually eccentric calcium. With the fact that you have the C2+, Plus, you can use those extra pulses to really affect that eccentric calcium. Moreover, when we used to use the regular C2 catheter, the way we would do this is specifically by figuring out the areas that were the tightest um, and then rationing our pulses out. And now with the C2 Plus, given that you have more pulses, you don't have to be as fastidious about uh, rationing those pulses out. And so as a result, you can give them much more uh, uniformly if you want through the vessel. The other part is that when you look at some of the data regarding MSA or minimal stent area, as it pertains to uh, calcium expansion, you would think that the areas that would have the lowest MSA are the areas that have the most calcium. And you know what studies have now shown is that the areas that are actually the areas where you have MSA are, is not where you have the most calcium. It's a lot of the eccentric areas that may not have been um, recognized uh, by the interventionalist when uh, stenting. So the other places where C2 Plus works exceptionally well is also in long diffuse calcific disease. So there's a theoretical length of about 122 millimeters uh, of treatment that you can use. So that's another subset that works very well. A second subset, uh, in addition to nodular or eccentric calcium, is bifurcations. And so for bifurcations, um, you, don't, you don't have to ration it again as fastidiously as you would otherwise have to, um, and you can take care of bifurcations exceptionally well. Um, and then in a third subtype, um, one could also potentially use it for multi-vessel PCI as well. So if you need to do a right coronary and an LAD, you could potentially use it for both because you have more pulses. Does it improve procedural efficiency? I think it absolutely improves uh, procedural efficiency. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One, the fact that you don't have to use multiple different devices uh, helps with that. The second is the fact that those additional pulses allow you to just have to use one IVL balloon. Sometimes you needed more than one IVL balloon because you ran out of pulses, so you no longer have that. And then the third part is if you're even concerned about whether or not there's going to be any calcium modification that you need to use, given the fact that the C2 Plus is now available, um, you're, you can use it readily without any problems. Yeah, I think that with the C2 Plus, uh, it's definitely decreased my use of atherectomy. And the reason for that is, in the past, if, it, if there was a, a very long area of calcification or really diffuse disease, such as a long RCA that was super calcified, I would consider using atherectomy just to help improve procedural efficiency, or that I may just not have enough pulses to be able to modify uh, the actual calcium for the entire artery. And now, because of the fact that you have more pulses, I'm more apt to use IVL up front as opposed to an atherectomy-based strategy. When it comes to safety, we know from the Disrupt CAD data that there were no perforations that transpired except one, and that perforation only transpired because of not the IVL, but the post-dilatation done afterwards. And so from a safety profile, it's been great. So 
if I have to choose between atherectomy and use IVL, the fact that the data is so profound for IVL, and when it comes to safety, that's what I go for. And now the fact that I have additional pulses uh, for a very safe modality, it makes me want to use that more than almost any other calcium modification therapy.